welcome to the standpoint our very first episode of the new season for 2017 and yesterday is the third of march and we call the month of march the ghanaian woman's month specifically the ghanaian woman and what a time to start on Monday, we'll be celebrating Ghana at 60. Yay! 60 years, yes. Uh, but where are we as women? Two days after, on Wednesday, it will be International Women's Day. Hey, Ghanaian women, where are we? 35 in Parliament out of 275. But welcome to the standpoint. We always say it as it is. And this year, our theme is the woman as an achiever. So we are not leaving any woman behind. And we are not joking. We are going to say it as it is. We are going to push. We are going to encourage. We are going to motivate. We are going to support each other. Hold each other's hands. Old, young, wherever you come from. No matter your political, educational, financial, societal, whatever status, we are all going together. Because this is the time for us to sit up as women and get it right. 60 years of Ghana's independence. My name is Ohine Yuri Gifty Anti. Welcome to The Standpoint. Let me say thank you to our sponsors. And I'd like to say thank you to GTP. Always timeless. They give me the cloth and I'm so grateful to them. Thank you to Ophelia Crossland Designs for sewing this dress for me. And then thank you to my new um, designer on the blog, my supplier of beads, Kua Designs. I am now officially Paba Ambassador. About time. I've been using Paba for over six years. And you just can't go wrong. So now I am a Paba Ambassador. Wherever you see me, just say Paba. And I'll respond. And I'll direct you. direct you where you can get Paba um, from and of course it was all put together my face was beautifully put together by makeup and more they've been with us for more than five years I'm so grateful to them we take a break when we come back 60 years of Ghana's independence by the way during independence where was the Ghanaian woman was she just that woman dancing in the black and white pictures we see on TV or she played a role we'll be back Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is the standpoint, the very first edition for a new season for 2017. And this is our Ghanaian Women's Month. That is March. And today we are going to look at the role the Ghanaian woman played in our struggle for independence. And look at where we are as women 60 years on and where are we going? Actually, where do we want to go? The Standpoint is sponsored by Tina Ted Herbal. They produce Tina Ted, um, Tomacare, Venicare, and all the herbal-based good, you know, medicines sold at proper designated drug and uh, pharmacy, drug stores and pharmacies in this country. Thank you to Lip Tomato Paste. And then, of course, NS Chemist. They produce Auntie Mary's Baby Gripe Mixture and Nescofa Tonic. Um, thank you to um, Wilma Africa Limited. They manufacture Frytol, our good old Frytol. You can never go wrong with it, we know, from generation to generation. It's been passed on to us, and we still use it. And Fortune Rice, the Fortune Rice, they have three types. They have the green one, which is good for a mutual. They have the orange one, which is very, very good for watching. And then the wine-colored one. I mean, I'm talking about the outlook, not the rice, it's wine. No, no, no. no. The, the, the outlook, the packaging, the wine one, is that's the Thai Fortune Rice. And that's very good for jollof. And then... Um, fried rice. You, you don't go wrong with it. Yeah. So look out for it. And thank you to Anointed Electrical Engineering Services. Today in the studio, I have some beautiful young ladies and I'm pleased they are here because they want to learn about their history. They want to learn about the Ghanaian woman and they are the face of the nation beauty pageant contestants. Beautiful. You really represent the nation well. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Well, on the panel, I have with me um, 
Dr. Esther Ofe Abuaji, she wears so many hats. I don't know which one to give her. Former director of the Institute of Local Government Studies. Um, she is a member of the National Development Planning Committee. And then she's a civil servant. So she's a um, gender activist, advocate, feminist, mother, church elder, a counselor, everything. <laughs> and next to her, I have my sister Gertrude Ajo Akpalu, public health uh, monitoring and evaluation specialist. Welcome to the standpoint. See, she's also my sister because her mother is my mother, Mrs. You know, Elizabeth Apalu. Yeah, she, so she's my sister. So today, um, it's family affair. <laughs> it's really family affair. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Ghana yes. is 60. Yes. Auntie Esther. Yes. Do we have something to celebrate as women? Yes. As Ghana turns 60. Yes. Gifty, I think we have something to celebrate. Um, if we have made any gains at all, I think it's worth celebrating. It's worth encouraging ourselves about and uh, learning lessons in order to move forward. Um, the progress has been slower than many people expected. A lot of people will tell you that the gains we've made have not been commensurate with the efforts we've put in. But I am happy in the sense that even with the 35 women in parliament, the proportion has moved up fractionally. You know, it hasn't gone back. At a point uh, when women were losing the primaries, I was afraid that yeah. the proportion was going to go down in parliament. So I was gratified to see what we got. I was also gratified by the mix, mm. you know. Yeah. We've got women under 25 yes. in, parliament, in parliament, with yeah. the majority of more than 70,000. Yeah. We've got grandmothers. Yeah. We've got um, beauty service providers. Yes. We've got lawyers. We've got all manner. Yes, we've got doctors. So have we, have a yeah. we have a happy mix. Yeah. We have them from all over Ghana, yeah. from the northern region, western, everywhere. Yeah. And so I am gratified by the mix. I'm particularly happy that young women see a future in politics, mm. you know. And right. uh, because if you look at those who put themselves up, uh, even for nomination, there were a lot of young women. Yeah. And so it gives me hope for the future of this okay. country. Mm. Gertrude, what about you? Um, I think uh, I agree with what Auntie Esther has said already. And then as I, um, my mom has been part of the, the gender movement for a very long time. So I've also been brought up in that. And for me, it was very, very um, heartwarming to actually see the number of young women who actually took the step to decide to go into politics. I have a very good friend who's a classmate, Ifia Pia, who has yes. been attempt, who has, um, she has stood, I think, three times. Yeah. And um, it's been very interesting because we were all like surprised. I mean. We're, like, why would you want to do such a thing? But it was a good experience. And this time around, just seeing, for me, is a young woman who actually said that we are going to do this. Yeah. We are going to take that step because there are challenges. Mm -hmm. And they went. If they did not even win, they at least took that step. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's very encouraging. And as Auntie Esther said, the mix that we have in Parliament mm -hmm. now is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And it gives us hope. And I hope that those of us here especially those in the crowd, you know that you can do anything as a woman. Mm. And you can take the step to go on and make sure that you can stand for whichever position that you want to. But the best thing is to be where the decisions are going to be made. Yeah. And that is the way to go. And I'm very, very happy. And I'm looking forward to many more women to be appointed into other positions of power and decision making. And then also the next four years, you never know. Mm. I'm sure we'll get four of us from this, you know, um, from here to date who will stand for, for, for election. So... It's, it's very encouraging. It's very, it's very, very encouraging. encouraging. Yes. And, and they made strides. You yes. know, the young lady, mm -hmm. I think she's Francisca. Mm -hmm. Yes, Francisca from the Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. She actually oh, yes. hmm, brought down a oh, pillar. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then there was another one from the University of Cape Coast in the Volta region, yes. who also yes. unseated a yes. sitting mm -hmm. MP. And yes. quite interesting. But anyway, as I, sta as I said when I, I started, Auntie Esther, yes. when you watch the Ghana independence documentaries right. 
you see, all you see are the women dancing, yeah. you know, joining the crowd and all that. Yeah. Was the Ghanaian woman there? Did she play a role? Oh, the Ghanaian woman was there. Except that they did what women do best. Mm. They organized, they facilitated, and they made things possible. A lot of their work was behind the scenes. Mm. Indeed, in the struggle up to 1951, they were there mobilizing, um, creating the energy, uh, creating affection, creating awareness, bringing their families and their businesses on board. You know, where women congregate, that's in the markets. Mm. The markets became vehicles for mobilization. Mm. When you read the history, there were people like Madame Adiankra. Mm. I understand she was from Kole Wokon. Mm. And then uh, she, for instance, because of her efforts at membership drive, yeah. her nickname was Mrs. Uh, Nkrumah. Okay. Then uh, there was uh, Madame Lydia Ado, um, mm. well, she spoke at a 1960 Bukom rally. We also hear of Madame Dede Aite, right. you know, who was a special women's organizer. Mm. So during the early periods of the struggle, you see these women, they are social associations. You know that a lot of markets have welfare associations where they support each other. Right. They have their susu clubs, their credit mm. unions. So by those associations, they could spread the message we can make a change, we can bring about a change. And also, especially in the aftermath of the Second World War, 19, late 1940s, you know, realizing that the black person can take charge of their destinies. Mm -hmm. uh, they were mobilizing, they were organizing their rallies, organizing their refreshments, organizing the dancing, organizing the seats and the chairs, and so on. So they were very much there very much there with their benevolent associations and so on, you know, creating the groundswell mm. uh, that would turn the women and their families, mm. even speaking to their husbands and their sons mm. um, to support this wave. Mm. So they facilitated things pretty let's, much let's like go through the now. names again. Right. And Nade De. Yes, Madame. I mentioned uh, Madame Madiankra. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I understand she was from Kole Wokon. Okay. Uh, Madame Dede Aite, okay. she was a special women's organizer. Right, yeah. We also have learned about Madame Lydia Addo. Yeah. Then in the early, I mean, the 1951 era, mm. uh, we know of uh, Hannah Kujo, right. Aman Kroma, Leticia Kwe, right. Sophia Doku. They were propaganda secretaries uh, with the responsibility of organizing the CPP Women's League. Yeah. We go on, we go on, we talk about people like um, Evelyn Amate Few, mm -hmm. um, the Ghana Federation of Women. You know, all these areas where women congregate uh, were areas for political mobilization and socialization. But it took affirmative action uh, for the CPP and the other parties to recognize the effort of the women. Mm -hmm. So in 1960, a bill went through Parliament uh, called the Representation of the People uh, Women's Members Bill. And through that, 10 women were elected unopposed as members of Parliament in June 1960. June 1960, yes. 10 women were elected unopposed to go to Parliament yes. on CPP tickets. After that, we are still struggling for affirmative action. It was on the, when did the president give the State of the Nation address, 21st February, mm -hmm. in parliament. Mm -hmm. He promised that they are going to work on the affirmative action bill and make sure it is passed into law. And he will make sure that he implements it. So as women, we'll be demanding. Yes. And still demanding. And the young ladies are going to join us to demand yes. and keep demanding. Yes. We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> the standpoint is supported by Gogot Yogurt, Awake Purified Water. Thank you to Cake Technique, the Dansoman, for all your 
pastries and cakes and whatever you need, just contact them and they will sort you out. And of course, House of Food, Ante Vera, also Dan Suman, thank you so much for supporting us all this while. Matamis gives us the port and we are grateful to them. Yep, cleaning services, make sure our environment is very, very clean. So we are grateful to all, all our supporters. Ajo, I love calling you the Ajo. Yes. <laughs> so these women, when 1960, affirmative action, they went to parliament. And did they make any impact in parliament? Oh, they did. They made a huge impact. And I think that impact is what we are feeling today. And that is what we are con going to continue with. And um, I must say that even though it was 10 then, because I think about 52 of them stood, mm. or 52 of them were supposed to be represented, and they had 10 from the various regions. But from 1960 till now, yes, we're now at 35, but just their presence in Parliament has given that encouragement to many more mm. for them to be able to take up that challenge. Mm. And also, apart from the fact that they were in Parliament, they also brought the encouragement for women in different sectors. We have the education sector, we have the health sector, agriculture, mm. science and technology. Because and those are, served as ministers Yes, as well. some of the ministers. So that mm. also paved the way for mm. them to now to go into, to become ministers. Mm. Then also, that also led to, I remember when I was a kid, my mom was at the National Council of Women and Development. Okay. And there were some very prominent women there too, who also I met as a child, um, Dr. Esther Oklu, mm. Professor Florence Dolphin. Um, a couple of others, I cannot remember their names, but they brought about the National Council of Women in Development. Yeah. And that is where we saw a lot of activities, a lot of um, strategies, a lot of um, things that were put together yeah. where women when, had a voice, like a voice that was more formalized and said, okay, this is what we want to do. And I think that is now the Ministry of Women, um, Children, um, Gender and Social Protection. Yeah. So it's just amazing, first and foremost, as I said, sitting <laughs> even here with, with Auntie her. Esther. I know, right? And then also even being on the show. I mean, yeah. I think without these women, we'll not even be here, the standpoint, because mm. they would not have given us a course yeah. to be able to have this discussion. Yeah. And I think that it's... Um, it's been quite slow, mm. but you know, with everything, sometimes mm. some journeys have quite long. Yeah. And I think with the support that yeah, we have. I, I was mm -hmm. going to ask you that to look back mm -hmm. 1960 to 19, uh, 2017, mm -hmm. that's 57 years, yes. we are still talking about getting affirmative action. Mm -hmm. So after CPP, there hasn't been any, mm -hmm. so there was no successive plan in place and now we're still talking about affirmative action. And this particular one, Bill, has been in Parliament for mm -hmm. God knows. Yeah. I've started, the, the standpoint is in its ninth, ninth year. year. Mm -hmm. And from the time I started, yes. one of the things we talked about was mm -hmm. affirmative action. Yes. Gifty, I have been typing and supporting my mom with affirmative action. I have been doing this for over 10 years, as you're saying, and I always keep on saying, when is it ever going to be passed? But from the last, um, our president's last um, um, State of the Nations address, I'm hopeful that this time around, I think in the next four years, mm -hmm. at least we are going to see it actually come to reality. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping and praying, I think we continue to make the noise, we continue to promote advocates, mm -hmm. and we can get there. And I think we would get there. Yes, yeah, Jeremy, don't you think this would be a beautiful present, uh, present from the president to the women of Ghana, even as we turn 60, to pass the affirmative action bill? I think it's, it would be a beautiful uh, birthday present. Um, there have been efforts at affirmative action, uh, but not uh, from a legislated point of view. Indeed, our constitution uh, recommends special attention and special measures, you know, to build or fill these gaps or, you know, speed the process up. Uh, we've had affirmative action in other ways, like um, parts in education, for instance, for sections of the country, yeah. you know. But we've also had affirmative action in local government uh, for um, since 1998, uh, post Beijing. I mean, when uh, the white paper uh, came out. Uh, but the problem with all of this is that because there isn't a coordinated, actionable uh, um, framework where you can sanction uh, people not living up to it, 
uh, we haven't been able to feel the impact. Again, educational institutions, particularly in tertiary education, they've made some effort at affirmative action. But what we want is a coordinated, consistent, actionable framework that is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. That is going somewhere. Where if people don't live up to it, they can be sanctioned for not acting mm -hmm. on it. But people don't, I mean, people, sections of the population instinctively don't like affirmative action. Mm. Mm. They instinctively don't like affirmative action because they see it as undeserved, unmerited, and unwarranted favor. They see it as a way of taking away opportunities for those who've worked hard for them to get it. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. The case is to make sure that Ghana maximizes or optimizes its human resources. So that if you have your women with their brains operating in top form, alongside their men, 51% of the population, I mean, this country is going to go places. So if His Excellency the President has signaled his willingness, um, the previous president shepherded the process. Now it is up to our parliamentarians. It is up to our parliamentarians, you know, to you know, give it the thought, give it the support, and give it this, the, the, the push that is required. Mm. Ajo, what do you think is the greatest challenge of the Ghanaian woman, even as we turn 60? Wow. <laughs> I think the greatest challenge is um, us being really prominent in the areas of decision making, policy making and decision making. We are there, but we are not there yet. And I think that the systems that are also in place, the systems like our, our, our social uh, our social, sociocultural traditions, our beliefs, and even I think our religious beliefs always kind of set us back. I think for me that is the greatest challenge. How do we get out of what is socially or um, traditionally or religiously okay to be able to now say that yes, even though society says that a woman's place is at, in the home, we can still be in the home but at the same time be you know, be maybe the CEO or a minister. I think for me that is the greatest challenge as a young person. Is that how do we think outside the box? Still, do not disrespect our society, mm -hmm. our family, and you know our elders. But at the same time, be able to progress as women. For me, from a young woman's perspective, mm -hmm. that is what I believe is our social, cultural, and religious beliefs and mm -hmm. traditions. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do agree. I agree to the extent that social change is very, very difficult to overcome. Mm. Um, Ghanaian women have excelled. Pockets of Ghanaian women have excelled. But they stand like islands of excellence. In the sense that, you know, at the beginning of this program, you asked um, the, the young ladies here whether they had heard these names. They hadn't. There were other people, you know, we we're talking about Mabel Dove, yes. and we we're saying that we should remember she was a journalist. Yes. You know, we have Theodore Theokon, we have Leticia Bing, education yes. scientist, and we have even people like Mrs. Irene Wontumi, yes. who in the 70s was the first uh, woman civil servant in the administrative class. Yes. You see, they're all there, but we, our young women, don't know, know about, about them. them. You see, so that notion of women excelling and giving them uh, role models to or people they can look up to excel mm. is an effort we have to uh, put in vigorously. Mm. We need to give our young women something to hold on to. Mm. The fact that they can be anything and everything they want to be. For me, that's what is uh, critical, f I mean, for me, for the way forward. Right. Giving our young women something to hold on to mm -hmm. and recognizing that they can be anything and everything, everything. they want to be.
Thank you very much. Let me take a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. The Standpoint is sponsored by Anointed Electrical Engineering Services, the generator expert, Tinated Herbal. They produce Tinated Venacare and Tomacare, Lip Tomato Paste, and Eschemis. They produce Anti Mary's Baby Gripe Mixture and Nescoffa Blood Tonic. And of course, Wilma Africa, Frital and fortune rise. We take a break, we'll be back. <laughs> okay, welcome back to the stand point. Yes, we're learning a lot, getting refresher courses. We are having a reason to believe in ourselves. As Ghanaian women, even as we celebrate Ghana 60 and the Ghanaian Women's Month on the standpoint. Well, thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress was sewn by Ophelia Crossland Designs. They are Tosu. I mean, Sarah Fabrics, you know, build the same building. They are in there. You find them. They'll sort you out nicely. My beads from Kua Designs. They are at um, Laboni, near Paba Cosmetics. It's on the same road. Not difficult to find at all. And, of course, makeup products by Paba Cosmetics. I've been using it for, like, ever. And um, we are grateful to them. And makeup applied by Makeup and More loyal 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 people and i'm grateful to them for supporting the standpoint all these years we are so grateful to them Ajo, as we round up ghana 60 monday will be 60 years 60 years on we had the president we want to give him he's a politician but we want to give him the benefit of the doubt thankfully he spoke so i mean passionately about his need and his passion to see women, you know, um, advance in their various fields of endeavor, promote affirmative action, and so on and so forth. The Speaker of Parliament himself, interestingly, mm -hmm. also talked about the fact that he's very interested in issues affecting women and making sure that Parliament concentrate and give women the platform and the voice. So let's take it that there will be the opportunities. So how do we prepare ourselves as women to grab the opportunities and make sure we qualify and fit into the spaces when it's created. I think the first thing is education. And education doesn't mean that you have to go up to the tertiary level. Education and also in the fact that you should have a vocational skill. Women need to be skilled. We need to be skilled to be able to penetrate to society to get to where we have to get to. We can be skilled in terms of you don't have to be an university graduate, the informal sector. You can be a beautician. You can be a designer. You can be a driver. There are these taxi drivers these days, and there's this one lady who is doing so well. well yeah. There are different aspects of our, our society that you can penetrate. And when you are there, you should be a leader. Mm. And a leader doesn't mean you have to go to school to learn. You should be somebody who can say, you know what, as Auntie Esther said, things have to change. And if things have to change, this is the way things have to be. I want to see, let's say, at a taxi rank, a 37 taxi rank, two or three female drivers, they should be part of the executive, so even lead the group there. Wherever we see ourselves or find ourselves, we should be part of the leadership. We should be part of the decision making. We should be part of the policy making. And for me, I always say that if you do not know, or if you do not take part in it, you will never know what is happening. We'll be sitting there, bills will be passed, things will be happening, and we'll just be sitting there. We need to be educated, not just in school education. My education in gender and order was from the home. Auntie Esther, my mom, I mean all those other women who every time we were sitting down listening to them, wondering who are these women, talking about all these things and saying affirmative action. But I learned so much about being a woman mm. and how to achieve and mm. become a leader mm. through just the informal education that I received from my mom and my aunties and all the other women who were part of the movement. Right. And I think that we need to ensure that we have a skill. Mm. We have to be skilled. Without the skills, there's no way we can progress or be where we have to And leadership. Right. Leadership, and we need to also learn ourselves. Yeah. We have the internet now. You know, as for the learning, I yes. mean, I have goosebumps. And just, uh, I mean, last mm. week Friday, I met a young lady who be, we will be featuring on the standpoint. Mm. She came from the remotest part of Ghana. She hadn't seen electricity before before she came to Accra. Mm. When she was coming to Accra, she hid behind a truck full of Kobe. 
you know, to come to a class. She didn't know anybody. She was coming to look. And now she walks in the corridors of power. And she said, Auntie Gifty, all I did was everything. When I, even when I was selling on the market, mm -hmm. selling a sugar cane, when I see a paper that they used to wrap the, the plantain for me, I will read. Mm -hmm. And when I was a house help, when they sent me to go and buy bread, I'm reading what is written on the mm -hmm. bread. Wherever I, mm -hmm. I, I get a material, I read. But our ladies of today, some of us, even adults, all we do is Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> IG, LinkedIn, um, what? Snapchat. 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 E, e what? Emo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Auntie, um, I guess I think yeah, you have a point, mm -hmm. but I also want to uh, commend the technology revolution mm -hmm. as an opportunity for bringing women up. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a young lady in my house mm -hmm. who also has not been in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But she can do Twitter. I can't. Hey. She has following. Hey. I don't. No, see. And, um, but she hasn't sat in a classroom mm -hmm. before. But she's also able to do all manner of things. Mm -hmm. These days... Um, your our mothers in the villages mm. when they want money when they want something for a funeral they don't need your presence just no. send them mobile money. money if there is a, a a cloth to be had they just um take a shot, take of, a it, shot of, of it, it and, and send, send it, it to you what's up yeah my point is um the information technology revolution presents boundless opportunities mm. particularly for distance learning <coughs> for mass learning we need to penetrate right down to the ground. If market women are able to use Isoko and are able to use other uh, programs to enhance their business, then we need to take advantage of that to get that learning out and also get as many young women on board as possible. Use it to enhance their health, their awareness, their knowledge of rights, where they can get services and where they can get the <coughs> assistance that they need. And the signals are right. I mean, in the sense that, like uh, you've said, I mean, the signals are right. We're very lucky. We have an experienced development person as the chief of staff. I know that uh, we are in excellent hands. Again, another very good piece of news was the appointment of the cabinet secretary. As a very experienced mm -hmm. um, um, career diplomat, mm -hmm. that is also very encouraging. Mm -hmm. We were and the first time we are having a woman as woman a cabinet secretary. Yes, as a tad concerned mm -hmm. about not having representation in the regional ministers. Yes, but I know that uh, the women are going to uh, be represented in the as deputy, deputy ministers. Yes. Not only that as chairpersons of boards, Thank as you. chief executives, Chiefs, yes. so that if we get 30% of that, it's good. good. But if I get 40%, I'll be happy. Be if I get 50%, I'll be ecstatic. <laughs> yes, Ghana is 60, and yes, I'm one of those who believe that we have everything to celebrate. We've come far, we've gone through a lot. But by the grace of God, we're still here. We are kept together as one people, one destiny. Yes, we've been divided by politics, polarized here and there, but we are together. We still intermarry. We still live together. We still have friends from different religious backgrounds and uh, you know, societal backgrounds or ethnic backgrounds. We are still one people. So yes, we have a lot to celebrate. And even as the independent stories are told, um, if you're lucky, you will hear the stories of the women who played a role. But trust me, the women who played very important roles, they were there in their numbers. So you have everything to be proud of as a Ghanaian woman, young woman growing up. Google is there, the internet is there. Take advantage, read about them, rejuvenate yourself, empower yourself. Take pride in these women, that if they were able to do it then, in the 50s, in the 60s, you have a better opportunity to do it now. Even as we celebrate 60 years, we have a long way to go. My dear lady, my dear sister, my dear mother, we still have the opportunity. 
the president has promised. Let's take his word and give him the benefit of the doubt that the opportunities will be there. Let's put ourselves in readiness to take up the challenge when it comes, when the opportunity comes. Let's prepare ourselves. Let's add value to ourselves. Let's educate ourselves. Let's empower ourselves. Let's tell ourselves that, yes, the insults will be there. The name, the name calling will be there. But it shouldn't stop us. It should not stop us. We should hold each other by the hand and really face the struggle ahead and forge ahead as one people. The theme for the 60th anniversary is mobilizing for Ghana's future. Ghana's future is our youth. And when we talk about our youth, we can single out the young ladies because they are going to be the hand that will rock the cradle. And that hand that rocks the cradle must be powerful. It must be educated. So it brings our young people the right way. Happy anniversary to all of us. May God bless us all. Let's hold on to our faith. Let's keep believing in Ghana and what we have. My name is Ohine Yuri Thanks for watching The Standpoint. See you same time next week. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.